What is up? My name is George, the Sports Freak. So, Tua Tagovailoa, he was benched for the second time this season against the Raiders on Saturday night, the primetime game for the Dolphins. Uh, both teams were fighting for a playoff spot. Dolphins had the craziest ending I think I've ever seen. The most Fitz magic moment. Uh, Tua, they were down 13 to 16 in the fourth quarter, and Brian Flores decided to pull Tua from the game and put in Brian. Uh, Brian Fitzpatrick, and then immediately they went down the field, kicked a field goal, then uh, again down the field, scored a touchdown. Then the final drive, it looked like they were gonna, it looked like they were gonna lose. They had like 19 seconds, something like that left. Uh, the Raiders had just kicked a field goal, so you assume they're gonna win. Prevent and just keep them in bounds, you know, because they don't have any timeouts. But Ryan Fitzpatrick had the craziest play ever. Everyone's seen it by now. Everyone watching probably have seen it with the. The no, the act, the no look pass whatsoever. <laughs> Ryan Fitzpatrick got a face mask, threw it down there to Mac Collins. It was a crazy play, and yeah, that was historic. And they got in the field goal range also from the face mask, and they won the game, 26-25, and kept their playoff hopes alive. Uh, the Dolphins have to beat the Bills this upcoming Sunday in order to make the playoffs, or they have to. There's a bunch of other scenarios that can happen; they can still make it. But uh, win the game, you're in. But yeah, Tua Tagovailoa was pulled. They were down 13 to 16. I, you know, I'm a I'm a big Tua fan. I'm a huge Tua fan. Uh, I'm a big time Alabama fan, so I've been rooting for him ever since. Uh, and he got pulled down 13 to 16, and that kind of, I was kind of, I was like, why'd you pull him? I know he wasn't playing great. He wasn't playing great, but he wasn't playing bad at that point in the game. He was 17 out of 22 for 94 yards um, and a touchdown. I mean, he wasn't. The thing is, he wasn't making risky throws. He was taking what the defense was giving him every single time. Every single play, I swear, it was like, take what the defense is giving you. Just take the simple the simple stuff. I mean, you go back and watch the film. It's not Tua's playing bad. It's Tua's not taking risks. And Ryan Fitzpatrick at that moment, everyone knows Ryan Fitzpatrick. He's hot or cold. He's hot or cold. There's no in-between. He's a gun. He's just He just wants the big play every time, takes it. You know, that's why he came on. I mean, he was taking the big plays. Obviously, the defense, not game plan for Ryan Fitzpatrick, the game plan for Tua. Tua was being ultra conservative, in my opinion. I think that is because of Brian Flores, because you have a great defense. And the main thing is don't put your team in bad positions by turning over the ball. And that's something that Tua has been, I think, hammered into his head by Brian Flores. Don't turn over the ball. Just going back at his three years at Alabama, his first season there, you know, he's the back of Jalen Hurts. He comes on, he's just slinging it the way Ryan Fitzpatrick is. He's just slinging it. I think he's just slinging it all over the field, making big plays happen. His uh, sophomore year, after the national championship, he wins the job. He's just slinging it, making big plays after big plays after big plays. And it's like, there's no there's no uh, consequence for that. He's just making big play after big play. Finally comes down to the SEC championship game and, you know, He's he wants to make the big play, the deep throw. Two is a gunslinger. That's something people seem to forget. Is that two is a gunslinger? They think he's some short, you know, RPO just doing this. And you know, yeah, he's RPO. He's the best RPO quarterback I've ever seen. But he's also a gunslinger. People forget he's a gunslinger. You look at his first two seasons at Alabama specifically, and near the end of his third year, his junior year, he was definitely more of a gunslinger then before he got injured. But specifically his first two years, he's a gunslinger. He throws the ball deep. He wants the explosive play every time. That was his mindset. He even said before, when I was the backup coming in, I just wanted to make big plays every time. I just wanted to make big plays every time. And that's what he was doing. He was making big plays every time. So this, this, I hate when I see comments and the Dolphin fans just saying like, oh, he's not, you know, they make it sound like Ryan Fitzpatrick's a gunslinger and Tua is just this, you know, short guy, you know, he was... He's super conservative with the ball. That's not Tua. I, I trust me. That's not Tua at all. Coming from a Alabama, an Alabama fan, that is not Tua at all. He's a gunslinger. I, I, if I'm, if I have one thing to say, that Dolphin Nation uh, is that you guys are not even close to seeing what the potential of Tua is. Y'all are just seeing a fraction of it. He's being ultra conservative right now. But trust me, you take off those chains or whatever, and you just tell him, don't be afraid, don't care, just sling it. Trust me, he will. He he will blow out you think Russell Wilson and Aaron Rodgers are like crazy and then you like Patrick Rome just wait till Tua you just take the lock off he'll sling it all over the field trust me one thing 
is, as I said, in Brenda Brian Flores, this is ultra conservative mindset, don't turning the ball over. And I was co- reiterating the fact when I said the Georgia game, SEC championship two years and his second season at Alabama, like I said, he wants the big play every time in that game. And Georgia is dropping back. They're rushing like four at, or three at the most. And they're just dropping everyone back in his zone. And Tua, that's, this is the, he doesn't, he wants the big play every time then. So he's just trying to take it and he's getting picked off. He got picked off like twice in that game. Um, he didn't have a good game. But by the time he finally realizes I need to take what the defense is giving me, because Jalen Waddle is doing these short little slants, three or five yards, and then taking it the rest of the way. Tua realizes that too late and he gets injured by that point. But he was learning at that point that just take what the defense gives you. Don't look for the big play every single time. And from that that whole season forward, because in the Clemson game, same thing happens. He's trying to make the big play happen every time, and he gets picked off. So his junior season comes along. He's definitely way more conservative in throwing. He's not throwing deep as much as he usually would. I mean, honestly, the first half of the season, he was throwing slants in the RPOs. That's honestly all he was doing. He wasn't going deep at all. Uh... And that was because of his whole mindset of just take what the defense is giving you. I can make big plays, but I can make plays by doing this, getting the balls in my wide receiver's hand. And that mindset has carried over into the Dolphins. And I think that Brian Flores has reinstated that really, really hard into Tua's mind because you have, it's like, we have a great defense. Just don't turn the ball over. Take what the defense gives you. I mean, Tua said that in interviews, and other people have just said that to him in general. Just take what the defense gives you. Don't make mistakes. You're a rookie. And he's doing that. So when he gets pulled in the Raiders game, it's for me, it's frustrating because he's it's hampering on his ability to grow. You want to see the quarterback grow, your rookie grow. And so when you take him out of the game, you're not letting him learn to come back, to lead it back. I, I was surprised he was taken out because against the Chiefs, the Chiefs it looked the way worse situation. They were down 30 to 10, and you're like, you I don't know if you're going to do anything. We're, we look like we're already out of this game. You know, I'm even thinking, this is in the third quarter. I'm thinking they should probably put Fitzpatrick in. I mean, Tua doesn't look good. Tua's not looking that great. They just, nothing seems right. But then they have the two drives. And they, Tua just, Tony Romo is saying this. He's, that these two drives, he just starts growing and learning and learning and moving the ball, scores the two touchdowns, but gets the field goal too, you know, puts his team in position to have a chance. And he's learning along that. The Raiders game, he never got the opportunity to, as a rookie, to learn through that game from what the defense was showing him. He didn't get that opportunity to learn. And I, that's what I feel frustrated about. But then on the other side, Brian Flores has got some balls to pull Tua from the game. I think the reason why, though, if if the Dolphins were already out of the playoffs, I don't think he would have put Fitzpatrick in. He would have been like, write it out with Tua. Let Tua learn, you know. You look at Peyton Benning, his first season, what, 26 or 28 interceptions leads to most forever by a rookie, J- even though they sucked, they were, but they were never in the playoffs. That's the thing. They were in the playoffs. Just let them in there. Let them learn. Let them learn. Let them learn. Let them learn. And that's what I was saying for two. Just let them learn. Let them learn. Let them learn. But the problem is they're in the playoffs and they want to make the playoffs. And at that point in the game, not that Ryan Fitzpatrick is the better option overall. It's just at that moment in the game. Ryan Fitzpatrick gives you a better chance to win because Ryan Fitzpatrick is not afraid to turn over the ball, gunsling it right now in the moment. Don't doesn't matter. Just go deep. You know, he doesn't his mindset is to go down, just get the ball down the field, get the ball down the field. If I turn over the ball, whatever, you know. To his mindset at the moment is not that exactly. His ball is be saved, you know, try to get down the field, be make smart decisions, you know. Ryan Fitzpatrick is just the opposite. Just I'm going to take it. I'm going to throw it in tight windows, throw it in crazy. My wide, trust my wide receiver is doing all that. And that's why he put him in. He put him in at the moment because they just needed that guy to just get the explosive plays down the field. A guy who's not going to care whether he turns the ball over. And that's why they did it ultimately because they needed to get to the playoffs. They needed to win this game to get into the playoffs. Um, and this eliminated the Raiders at the same time. And to top off that, people, I, I hate this narrative. They said that Tua... Alabama Open. Al- it's not Alabama Open. Elf- NFL Open and Alabama Open are totally different things. You know, Tua is so used to throwing to wide open wide receivers. You know, I was watching and seeing reactions of Dolphins fans. They're like, oh, he's used to throwing to these guys wide open. Jerry Judy, Devontae Smith, Henry Ruggs, uh, Jalen Waddle, all these guys just wide open. Ending off to Najee Harris, you know, all this. It's he's, it's not, it's wide open. It's He's so used to being a wide open. I If you go back and watch his tape at Alabama, he throws guys open. 
It looks like it's open, but when he throws it, they aren't open. He has that much trust in his wide receivers. It's not he's throwing guys open here. He's not he's waiting for the for the separation to be like five yards between the corner and the wide receiver. No. He just does not have the confidence in his wide receivers at the moment to throw them the ball. I, I don't blame him. His the wide receiving core that the Dolphins have is probably is the worst in the NFL, in my opinion. And people think he can't, he doesn't throw into tight windows. You know, that that's BS. Tua has the second highest percentage of throws in a tight coverage in the league at 22.8%. You know, that stat I just read out. I the first time I read it out was mind boggling. I didn't think that made any sense. But then I saw Fitzpatrick as the third highest with a 21.7. And just to make things into comparison, Russell Wilson and Mahomes have the lowest, but each below 11.5%. So that just says a lot how Tua, Tua is throwing into tight coverage. He's not throwing into that. He's not saying like, oh, I'm going to throw into, I'm not going to throw it to guys who aren't wide open. He is throwing to guys who are covered. He is taking it. Obviously, yes, it is on him. You need to be less conservative. Be Don't be too worried to turn over the ball. We expect you to turn over the ball as a rookie. Go for the big plays. That's what I, if I'm, if I'm Brian Flores, I'm telling him, hey man, don't be afraid to take the deep shot. But if I'm Brian Flores, tell Tua, Throw it deep, bro. I don't care. You're when you throw it deep, it's basic and they pick it off. It's basically like a punt. It's just like you're switching field positions. It's a punt, you know. Don't be afraid. I, I do. I do understand it though. You're what the wide receiving core. They suck. They really suck. You got two former quarterback college quarterbacks. You're throwing to uh, Mac Collins. You got. I mean, Gasicki's your only good guy, and it doesn't help. It doesn't help that Chan Gailey's your offensive coordinator. Chan Gailey, I don't expect him to be the offensive coordinator next year. I would be highly, highly, highly surprised if he's the offensive coordinator next year. He is made for Fitzpatrick, which it. That's another thing. When Fitzpatrick came on, it definitely is beneficial to him that Chan Gailey is the calling the plays for him. He has a great, great connection with Fitzpatrick from his days at Buffalo. He knows him. I think that was the only reason why they brought Chan Gailey in was for Fitzpatrick to kind of, when he started to lead the way, I don't think Chan Gailey, you're expecting him to retain him in the offseason. I'm pretty sure you got to, they're going to go after a different guy, a guy who knows to his strengths and weaknesses and can open the game a lot. Um, and it doesn't help, as I said, you don't have good wide receivers. They're definitely, I expect the Dolphins to sign a free agent, whether Allen Robinson or maybe Godwin from the Bucks. I mean, those are two guys who I would pursue. I understand you know, you don't want to overpay a guy, underpay a guy. I think Allen Robinson's a great wide receiver, great route runner, would be a guy to get. And then obviously, you have to draft a wide receiver in the first round. I think every Dolphins fan would say that we have to draft a wide receiver in the first round. I know the Dolphins right now are, <laughs> they because Bill O'Brien's the greatest GM in the world, you know, that he gave uh, the Dolphins their pick. And so they're picking in right now, currently the third pick in the draft, which is mind boggling. So they're probably going to take the Jets don't take a quarterback. They're probably going to take the tackle from Oregon. He's the best tackle in the class. Everyone says he's a generational prospect. I think he's pretty good from the film I've watched of him. They're probably going to take him. But with that second first-round pick you have, the Dolphins have to take a wide receiver, the best wide receiver available. A lot of people want Devontae Smith, Jamar Chase, or Jalen Waddell. I personally do not care which one they take. There's also This wide receiving class is stacked. There's a lot of great wide receivers. Uh, I personally think I actually, if you can get Jalen Waddle and Jamar Chase somehow, you know, I personally, I would take Jamar Chase with that third pick. I know that's a reach for a lot of people, but I would take him and then hope, hope that your other first round pick somehow Jalen Waddle falls because of his injury possibly. But if that's not the case, you know, you take the best tackle, you take, uh, the guy from Oregon and then you take, um, if you can take, I'd take Smith, Devontae Smith, hope he's there. Or Jamar Chase, but I doubt that. Do not take Devontae or take Jalen Waddle. Jalen Waddle is the best guy. J Imagine having a wide receiving core of Devontae Parker, Allen Robinson, or, or Godwin, and Jalen Waddle. That's you all have some way from having a crap wide receiving core to having a top wide receiving core in the NFL. I mean, you just look at the what the Buffalo Bills did when they took um, Stephon Diggs. That trade, they gave a first round pick up for it. But it was an excellent move. It was an excellent move. And Josh Allen is benefited from it so much. I mean, he is an MVP candidate. Is he going to win it? I don't know. It's probably going to be Aaron Rodgers. But he's definitely an MVP candidate. 
He's leading his team on a great run. You know, they obviously the Bills and the Dolphins play this upcoming weekend. It's going to be a great game, by the way. But that being said, Dolphin fans should not freak out that Tua got benched for the second time. The only reason he got benched is because they're in the playoffs. They're trying to compete for the playoffs. They're trying to get there. And at that moment in the game, because Tua is playing conservative at that moment, just because of how he's playing, he's a rookie. Remember that he's a rookie. Most rookies, when they're playing, they're usually on a crappy team. You just look at Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert has one of the best wide receiving cores in the country, and he's got a really good all-around running back in Austin Eckler. Uh, and that's compared to what Tua has, that's nothing. And he's losing games. He's losing games. So they, they, they're they not in the playoffs. They have nothing to lose. Nothing's going to happen if Justin Herbert turns over the ball. Obviously, Justin Herbert, I, I made a video talking about Justin Herbert. I criticized him. I didn't think he was going to be a good prospect. I've been wrong so far, and I'm glad to see him proving me wrong. But he's playing doesn't matter well how if he does play bad how bad he does play at some points which he's not but if he does they're not going to pull him from the game same with i said peyton manning you look at drew Brees, his rookie season you look at tom brady his first season all these guys were not playing great at all so when tua gets pulled it's not anything bad he's got 10 touchdowns at two interceptions i believe that as i said peyton manning 20 something interceptions the most ever by a rookie um Drew Brees, I believe they all, Drew Brees and Tom Brady have both had double digit interceptions in their first seasons as starters. So Dolphins fans should not be worried about Tua. He's going to grow. He's going to get better. And don't, don't buy this mindset that Tua is, you know, not a gunslinger. Tua, that's one thing. Tua is a gunslinger. Go back and watch all his highlights from high school to his years at Alabama. The guy can sling the ball all over the field and I, you you're not even anywhere near the ceiling of Tua. You're at the floor right now. The ceiling, you, you, you're you nowhere near the ceiling yet of what Tua can do. If I'm Dolphin fans, I'm still excited. You were never supposed to be in this position to be anywhere near the playoffs. You were guys 6-10, and 7-9, maybe that would be the best. But you guys are 10-5. and five. You're one game away from making the playoffs. The rebuild is already there. I mean, next season, you can call yourselves. You should be competing for the Super Bowl, to be honest. But uh, yeah. That's the video. You guys let me know what you think down below. Make sure to give me a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. And uh, follow me on Instagram. Link's down below. Uh, let me know what you think specifically. With Tua, you know, what you think he needs to work on. Obviously, he's got so much to work on. He didn't have the offseason. Like the whole NFL. None of them offseason. He didn't get to develop chemistry with the first team. You know, he was with the bat, with the second string, you know, throwing with them, scout team, whatever. So that's a big factor. But you guys let me know what you think down below. And I'll see you all in another video soon.